Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kendra, AKA Ms. K. I'm a medical assistant instructor. And today I was doing an EKG lesson with my students and a few of you guys have asked me to do an EKG video. So I decided to go ahead and um, do a quick uh, video to read an EKG, a quick intro to read an EKG because it's so much that goes into it. But today we're gonna do an intro, okay? So first of all, let's talk about what we're looking at when we look at the, um, when we look at an EKG strip, right? So let's first start here, right? So um, this is not a perfect EKG, of course. I am not an artist, so it doesn't look perfect. But when we're looking at the um, EKG, right? This right here, this little hump right here is gonna represent the P wave, okay? And then this here is a QRS uh, complex or QRS segment. And then we have the T wave, okay? Now let's look at what each of these represent. Now the P wave on the EKG, that represents atrial depolarization. Now when we say depolarization, we're referring to contraction, okay? So atrial depolarization, this is what the P wave represents, okay? The QRS segment is the ventricular depolarization, all right? And then the T wave represents ventricular repolarization. Now, after every depolarization, which is contraction, follows repolarization, right? So notice we have the ventricular depolarization followed by the ventricular repolarization, but where is the atrial depolarization? Now that's gonna be actually found within the QRS segment, so we can't see that, but I'm gonna make a note here that the atrial repolarization or atrial relaxation, right? That's gonna be found within the QRS, okay? So I'm just gonna kinda of put that there, all right? So again, P wave is atrial, that's when the atria is contracting, right? Then we got the QRS is when the ventricles are, ventricles are contracting, followed by the T wave. Now, um, I want you guys to add this to your notes right here because this is, when we go to uh, interpret the EKG, we're gonna come back to this, okay? Now, there's more to interpreting the EKG than the PR insulin and the QRS, but right now, this is where we're gonna start, okay? Um, so make a note of that. Uh, the PR interval should be between 0.12 um, and 0 0.20, the QRS should be less than 0 0.12, okay? And also make a note that every small box on the EKG paper is 0 0.04, the big boxes is 0 0.20. So these are gonna be some foundational things for when it comes to interpreting um, the EKG, okay? Okay, now, so let's talk about interpreting the EKG. Now there are five steps to uh, interpreting the EKG. The very first thing we wanna do is determine whether the rhythm is regular or irregular. And you can do that by using uh, this caliper here. And you wanna just determine that um, the distance between each R and the QRS segment, that there's an equal amount of space in between each one. So you can count the boxes in between each R and you can kinda just take this and go between each R. And if you notice you have to open it up or if you have to close it in, that kind of gives you an idea. So that's the first thing you want to do. You want to look at the rhythm to see if it's regular or irregular, right? Um, the next thing you want to do is determine the rate. Now, notice under number two, I have A, B, and C because there's three ways that we can determine a heart rate, right? So let's look at the first one. Let's look at just the six second method. Now, the six second method is the easiest method. Um, it's not the most accurate, but it is the easiest method because all you're doing is counting the number of R's within a six second strip, and then you're multiplying that number by 10. So if you have a six second strip and you uh, count seven um, R's or seven QRS uh, segments, then you know that you wanna multiply it by 10 and that's gonna give you a heart rate of 70. It's not as accurate because it's rounding off. Every number that you get is gonna be a multiple of 10. So if the patient's heart rate is 73, or you know 77 it's only giving you that um that multiple of 10 that's why that's not the most accurate they say it's more accurate with patients who have an arrhythmia um so the next method is the r method now we have two different r methods okay now the r method you want to count the small boxes between two r's and you're going to divide that number into 1500 okay not by 1500 into 1500 so if you count the, the small boxes between those R's and you uh, divide that number into 1,500, let's just say you uh, count uh, 20 boxes, right? Or t whatever in between uh, those R's, you're gonna divide 1,500 by 20, okay? The next R method 
is the big boxes. You're going to count the big boxes, and then you're going to divide that number into 300. So if you get three boxes or four big boxes, you want to divide 300 by that number, okay? So again, first step is determine whether the rhythm is regular or irregular. The second step is going to be determine the rate using one of these methods, right? Um, I tend to go for the big box uh, and then divide it into 300. Um, and then the next thing you want to do, you want to analyze the P waves. You want to ask yourself, are they present and are they upright? So you want to look again here. Do you see a P wave before every QRS, right? Okay, we do. Now we see that every P wave is present and every P wave is upright. Now, if the P wave is absent or maybe it's uh, present but it's uh, not upright, now that indicates some other problems that we're going to talk about in another video. Um, but the P waves are present, right? So that's going to be the third thing. The next thing we got to do is measure the PR interval. Now, that's going to take us to here, right? We said that every box is 0 0.04. So what we need to do, we want to measure the distance um, between where the P starts and that line right before uh, where the QRS uh, starts, right? So we're going to count the number of boxes and we're going to multiply that by 0 0.4, right? So let's just say the PR interval, let's just say we count, uh, let's just say um, three boxes, right? So three boxes and each box we say is 0 0.4. So we're going to multiply three times 0 0.04. And that's going to give us what? Point 12. Now, would that be normal? Yeah, because it falls within the range. Now, what if we have four boxes? Four boxes, so that would be four times 0 0.04, will give us what? Point, uh, sorry, 0 0.04. Sixteen. Now, is that normal? Yes. So, again, we're going to measure that PR interval. However many boxes we get within that interval, we're going to multiply by 0 0.4, and that should fall between 0 0.12 and uh, 0 0.20 to be normal. Now, the last thing we're going to look at is the QRS segment, and that should be less than 0.12, right? So, to measure the QRS segment, we're going to start right there where the Q starts, right? And then at the S. So that's how QRS. Now suppose we have two boxes there. So if we count two boxes, two times 0 0.04 is what? 0 0.08. Would that be normal? Yeah, because it's less than 12. If we count three boxes, what would that be? That's going to put us right at 0 0.12, right? So that's going to three times 0. 0 0.04, that's going to be 0 0.12, sorry, and that's going to put us right there. And so this is the, the basic, this is really it, guys. So now I'll do another video later on how to identify certain abnormalities like uh, bradycardia and tachycardia, and that's going to be actually pretty easy. Like once you know how to determine your rate and you know that bradycardia is a heart rate of 60 or less, and if you know that tachycardia is, is a heart rate of 100, or more, then you'll know, okay, you, you'll be able to identify tachycardia, right? One thing I do want to point out too is that when you have a P wave present, the P wave comes from the atria. And so if we have a P wave present and we know that the um, that the P wave represents atrial depolarization or atrial contraction, then, that, then we know that the impulse is starting in the atria, right? And so if it's starting in the atria, that's a sinus rhythm. So when we start getting into like um, the rhythms and things like that, you'll know that. Alrighty guys, I hope that this intro video was helpful. Like I said, I will do more on this later, but this is just the basics. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below or you can email me. If you haven't already, make sure you join my medical assistant Facebook group. It's called the Medical Assistant Lounge. Also check out my medical assistant t-shirts. I'll leave that link down below as well. Thank you again for visiting my channel. Be blessed.